Hey everybody, thanks so much for joining us right here on The Right View. Tonight, we are so excited to be joined by host of Unlocked with Savannah, Savannah Chrisley. Savannah, welcome to the show. Um, I feel like we ha we ha there's a lot I want to ask you, a <laughs> lot going on. We were talking before the show about all the craziness out there. For people who may not be totally familiar with you, I think people know you the best from a reality show, Chrisley Knows Best. And you were around 17 or so when the show started, from what I understand. How was that as a teen girl becoming a reality star? I feel like being 17 is hard enough, let yeah. alone with all the extra you had going on. What was all that like? So I actually started, it started on my 16th birthday. Oh my gosh. And it was it was absolutely insane you like to think like that's already a hard enough time as it is and then having the world to yeah. express their opinions beliefs and what they think you should be it was really really challenging um and i kind of got put in this little box that i never really could make my way out of until now recently at 26 years old <laughs> oh my gosh i mean but i feel like you've probably done You've done a sh your share of growing up from that time. I mean, I'm sure being thrust into kind of the spotlight and becoming a celebrity of sorts early on as a teenager was probably really challenging, but probably matured you quite a bit. And then you had a whole situation rather recently with your family. And we were just talking before the show, too, about a, a role that you took on that you probably didn't expect, which is that you're, you're kind of raising your brother and sister at this point, right? Yeah, so when my parents got sentenced to a combined 19 years in federal prison, I took on my 10-year-old sister, 17-year-old brother, and just took it. You know, when life hits, it's like you just take it as it comes. There's no way to prepare for it. And luckily now, eight months in, um, yesterday marked eight months since they've been gone. Wow. And we've kind of gotten into our groove and our routine of things. And it's not easy, but I also look at it and I'm like, how fortunate am I to be in a position to take on these two kids when the two million people that are incarcerated today, they don't have that family support system that can necessarily do what I've done. Yeah, no, I obviously they're very lucky and, and I hope they're doing okay with all this. That, that must be really challenging for your brother and sister as well to kind of process it all. Um, I, I know that it must have been such a whirlwind mm -hmm. for, for you, for your siblings um, to, to have to go through all of this. But I think it's kind of amazing to see what you're, you've kind of taken on as a mission. You yeah. want to improve conditions within the prison systems here in America. I assume this whole situation really opened your eyes to something you never thought you'd get to see, right? For sure. I mean, I like to say I'm like the poster child for being toned up to our system. It didn't affect me. Why should I care? And then as my parents are in there and they start telling me these things, I'm like, wait a second, it's 115 degrees and you have no air conditioning. Wow. Oh. You're consuming food that says not for human consumption. There is black mold, lead-based paint, unclean drinking water. I mean, people are dying every single day in these facilities and it's just swept under the rug. And what I love, kind of the best way I love to put it is they're service dogs within some of these facilities. And the service dogs are in a heated and cooled building because it's inhumane for them not to have air. So we're in reality, we're treating animals better than we're treating the men and women of our country by throwing them in facilities that don't have air conditioning. And that's the biggest issue for me is that, I mean, men and women are dying every single day and it's just being swept under the rug. Wow. So what, I mean, what can you do? I don't even know. How do you approach something like this? Is it about raising awareness or kind of how do you take on a challenge like this? So I, I kind of find it funny because when I first started trying to raise awareness to this topic, um, the BOP responded to my claims and said that well, basically called me a liar. And mm -hmm. I found it very fascinating because they're the ones to call me a liar, but you have all these men and women who are willing to come forward and say what she said is accurate. I am sitting on environmental reports that were mailed to me from some of these facilities. And if someone saw them, they would, they would be shocked. And I think, you know, um, 
There was a recent report done um, that the Office of Inspector General did a report and stated that 125 federal facilities, all 125 are in need of dire repairs, upwards of $2 billion. But then this, like Congress only gave them 60 million. So how do we correct this when the Office of Inspector General is stating that these are inhumane, unsafe conditions, what more does it take? Wow. Well, listen, I, I think it's really admirable to see a, a child like you take on a, a battle that obviously impacts your life directly by way of your parents. Yeah. You know, a, as a mom myself, I think in whatever space it may be, if one of my kids is fighting for me one day in some way, I it would make me incredibly proud. I'm sure your parents must be very proud of all that you are currently doing because you've taken on a lot, right? Yeah, they, you know, and they are, and I think that's the biggest, when you have someone to fight for, and, yeah. you know, thankfully, this has opened my eyes that it's not just fighting for my parents, it's fighting for every other child who's going without their parents, every other mother, father, sister, brother, and I look at it, and I'm like, when, when are we going to do more about it? And that's why it's like the First Step Act, which was implemented under the Trump right. administration. That Jared Kushner was behind that, obviously due to his own personal life. Mm -hmm. And I, to this day, am so grateful for President Trump signing that into office because I see these men and women that go through the system and they're all in there and they're loving President Trump because he's given them a way out. He's giving them a quicker way out. He's letting them know that, hey, you can better yourself by taking these classes and getting time off your sentences and entering into society in a safer manner. And obviously the recidivism rates have gone down, which shows that it is effective. But unfortunately, there's not enough intellect at the BOP to actually implement the First Step Act. Well, well, there there is more work to be done on a whole host of fronts, that is for sure. Um, and the fact that I, I love that you brought up my father-in-law because I didn't know this, but apparently your family was compared in some way to my family at some point uh, along the lines. Do you would you share the story with our audience because that's crazy? So they started the prosecutors in Fulton County, Georgia, started off the trial by stating, "Ladies and gentlemen, what we have here are the Trumps of the South," and like yeah. what? <laughs> for And for me, that was, it should scare people that we have prosecutors using such a polarizing statement to, right. you know, potentially sway the jurors. Mm -hmm. And it, to me, it was mind boggling. But also, too, th these are the same prosecutors who we, you know, in our appeal, we have said there are Brady violations against them. There are huge Fourth Amendment violations where the government illegally seized a warehouse, and this is where their so-called evidence came from. And that's a bigger issue, is when we allow the government overreach to keep going, and we do nothing about it. We swipe it under the rug and keep moving forward. And our prosecutor, the main prosecutor, didn't show up at the sentencing hearing, and now, right before oral arguments of the appeal, he has been moved to work at the FDIC. Mm. So it's, it just goes to show that the government will go to any extent to try to cover their tracks and hide the misconduct. Well, there certainly is overreach. That is for sure. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people have seen that. Um, a lot of people have seen it in the case of certainly my father-in-law and in many different aspects, I think of our, our lives these days, it feels like there's a little too much of uh, government involvement in all of our lives. So I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that. Um, I want to talk about what you're doing now, because on top of everything else, you're in the latest season of Special Forces World's Toughest Test, which, by the way, Savannah, can I just say, this sounds like something made for me. The fact that nobody called and asked me to go on, I'm a little offended, but that's okay. I'm just kidding. Uh, the first episode aired on the 25th. What is this experience like? And how do you think I would do? Do you think they'd ever call me? Because I'm available. Hey, I think you would do. I follow you on social media, and I watch, you're like, 
nothing I've ever seen. Oh, I'm gosh. <laughs> just your athletic ability is insane. I think, especially, too, with everything you have gone through with your family, you, I mean, you've been put to the test. So mentally, physically, yep. you've gone through it all. And I would love to see you on there because oh. you do have all these different polarizing figures on there. And it was a challenge. I mean, I'm not going to lie. It's like you're up at all hours of the night, freezing cold temperatures, and you have no connection back home. So that was the hardest part for me was I knew I was leaving two kids with my almost 80-year-old grandmother. I couldn't connect with them, make sure they were okay. So it was a big mental challenge for me. Wow. How long were you gone? Like, how long did all of this take? Two weeks. Wow. Yeah. And you don't get to shower. Like there's no good showers. There's no hairbrush. There's no skincare. There is nothing. And the food is like chicken and water. Like it is not. So that part of it, I may not love to be really honest. See my whole thing. I tell this, I say this to people all the time, Uh, my dream. And I love this. If you're like, listen, let's go out, start in the morning, Uh, We want to go out on like some crazy hike. There's going to be athleticism involved. You're going to be exhausted. It'll really like put you through it. But then on the other end of that, Savannah, I need to know that I have like a shower, a clean bed, something to look forward to in terms of food later. That's ideal for me. Not to say that I, I wouldn't do something like this. However, yeah, that would, uh, that would be the problem. I'm sure that that first shower, like when you got home and like slept in your bed for the first night, that must've been great. It was amazing. It was (laughs) until you're sleeping in a room with like 20 other people on just like a little cot. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And it's not like, you know, if it's my husband starts snoring, I just give him a little elbow, but like that might be hard in in a room with all the people. All right. Well, let's, let's see. Uh, there, I guess there's a lot more people are going to see of you on the show, right? Yes, there is. I mean, between that show and then obviously we have another family show in the works. So it's never ending. Girl, you are busy. What is something I feel like, you know, our life kind of seems like a reality TV show in, in like so many crazy ways. And I say all the time, if somebody followed me with a camera, people would be like, this is, this is some real crazy stuff. Just my dogs alone, my kids, all of it going down day to day. Um, it's interesting stuff, but what is something you don't think many people realize maybe about reality TV or being on reality TV? Tell us something we don't know. Cause I really, I don't know much. Uh, Honestly, you know, what do I not know? With our show, I look at it. I'm like, this was more of a scripted comedy because yeah. we're never allowed to touch on the reality of everything going on. I mean, my parents were under investigation for like 10 years wow. and they, which I, that's a whole different story. I'm like, it took the government 10 years to build a case. That seems a little weird, but we never spoke about it on TV because we weren't allowed to. Right. So as much of reality as it is, it's really not, you know, there's a lot that's contrived that's put on, but this new show we're doing is definitely going to be more reality. And it's hard when you work with family all day, every day, because you don't get, imagine like working with your, fa- you know, working with your family <laughs> all day, know. every day. Yeah. Like I know. <laughs> you, you go at each other sometimes. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot. And I feel like those days must be long, especially if it's not just like, oh, we're just going about our day. I'm making some lunch or I'm do- going here. If it's actually somewhat scripted, which obviously it has to be because yeah. you have these scenes where people are like in bed at night. I'm like this. There's no way these people are in the room while people are trying to go to sleep. Like that's definitely not happening. Right. Exactly. So, yeah. But I wonder how many people do people really think that it's all totally just it's like saying people think that when they're watching it, it's happening in that moment. Wow. Guys, this was filmed like eight months ago. Yeah. It, it's life is totally different now. I don't know what that says about, about a whole lot. Um, so are you talking about your podcast or is this a different reality show you're doing? Yeah, so it's a completely different reality show. Oh we're doing that's going to follow kind of the process of getting my parents home through and also I'm in the process of starting an organization that helps to bring awareness to what's going on in our prison systems because unfortunately we treat these men and women just we throw you in we throw away the key 
And obviously, for decades, it's been known that that's the Republicans' way of doing things. That Republicans have not really been known for prison reform until the Trump administration. And it was the most progressive, the first step act was the most progressive act to be put in place for prison reform in decades. And so it's going to kind of follow us fighting that journey to get them home and to uncover a lot of misconduct and figuring out how we're going. I've got the information now. It's just a matter of how we're going to put it out there. And then also just raising the two kids, keeping business going as usual. I mean, I'm basically, I'm a single parent, single income household, like showing that in a world to where the world cancels you, you don't have to cancel yourself and you can keep pushing forward. You know what? I love that. I, I am in agreement with you on that front. I feel like a great example of that is Donald Trump. I mean, my gosh, Savannah, how many times have they tried to cancel him? And he's just like, no, like, I'm not going to take it. I yeah. think that that so oftentimes people get so nervous and they kind of get frightened into almost canceling themselves. Oh, I'm just going to like shut down and like mm-hmm. eh, hide away for a little bit. No, if you don't have anything to hide, don't you hide then. You should be out front. You should be speaking your truth and telling people. Um, I love that. That's great. So you also have a podcast though, right? Unlock with yeah. Savannah. Yes. So that podcast, it's been great because – I started off just kind of giving people what they wanted. And now I've kind of gotten a little more comfortable and going outside of the box. And, you know, I had Governor Phil Murphy on my podcast and I love to have different points of view and to see, okay, where he's coming from now, you know, I've been in discussions with Carrie Lake and she said she would love to come on and to have different points of view to show people that, Hey, some like they're, point of view is valid. It comes off their own life experience and circumstances. And one's not right, one's not wrong, but we're all entitled to believe what we believe without being lambasted. It's a good rule of thumb. I wish we would do more of that, to be honest. You know, and when you kind of boil a lot down, I feel like most people at the end of the day want the same things. We want our families to be safe. We want to be able to provide a nice, a nice life for our families. And people generally just want to be left alone. Like just let us live our lives and let us do our thing and just make sure that the opportunities are there and available and free and all of that sort of thing. Um, This country is is truly the greatest for all of those things. We are only limited, I believe, by our imagination in terms of what we can do in the United States of America. Um, But you know what? I think that you are really inspiring, Savannah, because, you know, it would have been easy for you to have gone through something so public with your family Mm -hmm. that a lot of people probably would have hidden away and would have said, you know what? I can't face, you know, going out in front of people anymore and I'm just going to kind of hide in the background. And instead you're like, no, I'm going to fight for my parents. I'm going to fight for my siblings. And I think it's really admirable to see that you're doing that. And I'm sure it's giving, um, giving a lot of people, I think a good example to look up to. So kudos to you for doing that. Yeah. We need, we need more of that out there. Where can people find you if they want to find you on social media? Where can they find your podcast? Yeah, so my podcast, Unlocked, is on all platforms. You can also watch it on YouTube. Um, and then just my social handles are Savannah Chrisley, and I use my social channels to help to bring awareness to these things. You know, I went on Fox News and spoke about it. And I think social media is, unfortunately, where most people get their news in today's yeah. day and age. So we have to make sure that we're speaking out and doing what's right by it. Amen. Well, good luck to you. We'll be watching. I mean, now I got to watch this this show. Um, I got to see what I'm going to be in for when they call me for the Special Forces show. I got to see what's going on now with this, this new reality show. When will the new reality show be out? So we're hope. I mean, within the year for sure. Okay, you know, okay. we've had discussions with a bunch of different streamers, networks. So it's just a matter of where it's going to land. Okay. Well, you keep going, girl. Love I to see you. it. Hustle in a way. I, a girl after my own heart. Savannah Chrisley, thank you for being here with us today on The Right View. We appreciate it very much. And to everybody at home, as always, thank you for watching. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, share, and follow. And we'll see you back here next time for more of The Right View.
So I'm like a lot of people. I love to wear an Apple Watch, but I hate how it looks. And I scoured the internet to search for the best looking Apple Watch cases I could find, and I found it. Goldandcherry.com. They have absolutely beautiful watches, as you can see here. Everything is waterproof. Everything looks good with different outfits. You can get sporty, you can get fancy, but they are great quality, uh, made out of Delaware in the United States of America. And they have been kind enough to give me a promo code that I can share with you if you wanna get your hands on one of these as well. It's Lara T, L-A-R-A-T is the promo code to get yourself a discount at goldandcherry.com. And not only do they make Apple Watch cases, they also make great products for iPads and iPhones, keyboards, your desktop, everything you could possibly need. Goldandcherry.com, use promo code LARAT so you can get yourself one of these today too. At The Right View, uh, we're very proud of the fact that we are independent. We get to say, Everything that we think and everything that we feel, we have no woke companies guiding us or telling us what we can and cannot say. We are always gonna shoot you straight and give you the facts as we know them. And that's why it's important to support independent uh, outlets like The Right View. My name is Lara Trump and I think Mike Lindell is a patriot. He is someone who loves this country, is willing to fight for this country. Um, I love my pillow because not only are my pillows made in the USA by American workers, uh, but they're great products and they're so great that not only do I use them in my own bed at night, my children actually requested my daughter the other day went to the closet and pulled out a my pillow and said this is the pillow that i want to sleep with and i gotta tell you she loves it and will have nothing to do with any other pillow so it's a big hit around our house my dogs also uh happen to sleep on my pillow dog beds so all around the trump household we're big fans if you go to mypillow.com today and use promo code trump again promo code trump you will not only save money, but you will help us continue this show and other shows like it and help us continue the fight for the future of America. Inflation has impacted all of our lives. I don't think anyone can go to the gas pump or the grocery store without noticing that it is a major factor. And unfortunately, it's not going anywhere. It doesn't seem like it's going down in the way that we would like it to. And one way to protect your money is by investing in precious metals, uh, gold and silver. That's always been a great way to make sure that you keep your money and you keep it safe. When you go to bh-pm.com, use promo code TRUMP. That way, if you decide you want to invest in gold and silver, you'll save yourself a little bit of money. We live in a time that's very interesting. Uh, a lot of us out there feel like a lot of our rights are slipping away. And if you're like I am and you want to have the right to choose whether or not to have a vaccine, how to live your life freely, and you're looking for a great doctor, I've heard amazing things about Dr. Sherwood. He's somebody who you should really check out and check into, um, and it'll help support this program and keep us going. So go to Sherwood.tv and use promo code Trump. Again, Sherwood.tv and use promo code Trump. You can save yourself some money and help us keep our program going.